your sixth session of okay thank you it's recording now um, <clears throat> welcome to your sixth session of statistical inference literacy uh, today we're going to look at how we employ the different non-parameter tests uh, today is the 17th, we're dealing with the non-parametric test, and then on the 24th, we will be looking at how we solve simple linear regression and correlation, and then the last session will be on the 31st, we'll look at the time series, and then we would have concluded everything relating to content for STA1502, and then we can look at exam preparations as well. So there's not a lot to go on, only the last two sessions, so then we will be done. So if by tomorrow or by next week, um, there are not a lot of people also joining, then I don't think we will have the exam preparation. This will be the 31st of May will be the last session that I will, I will host. And then if you just need any help, then we can discuss that um, out of outside of the um the sessions okay any question or comment or query before we start with today's session nothing is it okay so the first one that we're going to look at is the wilkinson rank sum test for difference in two means or medians the things that you will require for you to successfully complete all this are your statistical tables, your formulas, and a calculator. By the end of the session, you need to or you will learn how to use Wilkinson rank sum test for two population medians and also how to present the uh, Wilkinson sign text a uh, sign ranks test for comparing two paired samples. <clears throat> so with Wilkinson rank sum test, there are several things that you need to be aware of. The test has to be of two independent population medians. The populations needs to be normally distributed. And the distribution has to be free procedural uh, distribution. And we use only uh, we use it only when we or we use it when only there is ranked data available. And we must always use normal approximation if either of the sample size is larger than 10. Some of the things that we need to be aware of is that um, we will need to uh, we need to use it when both uh, your sample size one and sample size two are less than ten, and we assign the ranks to determine uh, which one will be your n one and n two samples observation, and if unequal samples, then n one which will have the smaller size sample will be referred to or oh, the, 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 the samples that will have the smaller size sample size will be your N1. And that will be our smallest rank uh, value of one and our largest uh, value rank will be N plus two. Then we when there are ties, let's say there are two position ranks, um, the values that are the same, let's say is 30 and 30, they follow one another. What we do in terms of that, then we take the rank ties. So it means you're going to say that other one is 3.5 and the other one is 4.5, something like that. So it will take the rank ties. And the sum of the ranks for each sample, uh, so you will have sample one and sample two. So for each sample, you will also label them as T1 and T2, so those will be your ranks. And our test statistic, we will refer to the T1, which will be 
the ranks calculated from the small sample. You must always remember that our N1 will always represent the small sample. So if we have two samples, just if we have two samples, um, sample sizes, let's say we have the first sample size N1, if N1 is equals to 11 and N2, sample size N2 is equals to uh, 9. What? Um, just give me a second. Uh, I just need to just um, hold on. So Okay, um, sorry about that. It was my mother. I thought it's something agent. Um, I must apologize for that. So what I'm saying here is if our sample size is N1 is equals to 11 and N2 is equals to 9, uh, according to the Wilkinson, it means then we need to reverse them because your N1 needs to be the... Um, the sample size with the smallest values. So this will be our N1 and this will be our N2. And that's how you will assign your, your sample size numbers. And then when you calculate the rank from those values, therefore it means your T1 that we will calculate the sum of the ranks that you will calculate from the sample size N1, that will be our test statistics and that will be the value that we use to make a decision. So in terms of checking the ranks, um, <clears throat> we use this formula because it is the sum of the rankings and it must satisfy this formula before, below actually. And we take your ranks for T1 plus the ranks for T2 should be the same as your sample size, both for T1, for um, sample size one plus sample size two times the sample size one plus some sample size two plus one divided by two. And that is why you don't have to repeat n plus one, n plus one twice, so we can represent them by the sample size n. And they need to be the same. So if I add the ranks, they should be the same as if I add the sample sizes on the other side. And my electricity is back. So in terms of when we go and make a decision, because it's hypothesis testing, then there are a couple of things that you need to be aware of. Um, our median will be from po position one or population one and population two. So we will calculate the median or they will give you the median uh, to calculate that. And some of these things, remember, like I said, 1502 is a second module to 1501. So most of the basic things that you needed to learn, you learn them in 1501 and then you come and apply them in 1502. So for those who are doing 1501 and 1502 at the same time, it means you're learning these concepts at the same time, which makes things a little bit difficult and different because then some of these concepts you learn them later in the in the course, and then some of them you learn them in the beginning of the course. So you need to just make sure that you adjust um, how you learn um, content relating to 1501 and content relating to 1502. So in terms of calculating the test statistic, we know that we take the sum, the sum of the ranks from the sample size, and that is our T1. Now, if we want to make a decision to either reject the null hypothesis or to accept the alternative or reject or accept the null hypothesis, then we need to do a hypothesis testing. And the first step of hypothesis testing is to state your null hypothesis 
and also so that you are able to determine where your region of rejection will be when you go find the critical value. So in terms of stating your null hypothesis, if it's a two-tailed test, you will say the median the median for population one is the same as the median for population two. Alternative will state that they are not the same. So you can either use an equal sign, M1 equal M2, or in your alternative hypothesis, you will state that M1 is not equal to M2B. Therefore, it means there are some differences. Then you will need to go to the table to go find the critical values now. On the hypothesis testing, when it is two test or two sided test or two tail test, then it means there are two regions of rejection. So you're gonna go and find the upper T1 critical value and the lower T1 critical value. So there will be two critical values on the table and we'll look at the table so that you can see um, the values that I am referring to. So <clears throat> the, the critical value, once you have them, then they will create two regions of rejection. So as you can see here, if it's below this T1 uh, lower limit, you will reject the null hypothesis. If it's above T1 upper limit, you will reject the null hypothesis. Otherwise, if it falls between in between those two values, you do not reject the null hypothesis. For a left tail, um, <clears throat> for a left tail, your alternative hypothesis will state that your mean one is less than your mean two. And you will only have one region of rejection because you will only use your lower limit um, tail. So sorry, because I didn't switch off the TV today. No shady. Right. And for the right tail test, we use the alternative will be your mean uh, median for population one is greater than the median of population two. And you will only have one region of rejection. The other thing I forgot to mention is, please make sure that you complete the register. I can see that Jacques has posted it. Um, Okay, so let's look at an example of how we apply all that knowledge that we just learned. So, a sample data are collected on the capacity rate, and this is the percentage of capacity for two factories. And we need to test, are the median operating rates for the two factories the same? So that is the hypothesis that we need to test that at the two medians of those two factories, factory A and factory B, are they the same? And we are given here yeah, our factory A, the rates, 71, 82, 77, 94, and 88, and factory B, the rates, 85, 82, 92, 97. We need to test for the equality of the population median at 0, 0.05. And because they told us at the equality, so it means we are doing a two tail test. The first thing that we do is we put the capacity in order uh, so that we are able to rank them. So we start count, uh, putting the factory A and factory B uh, values together. And that one will be two and we have 82 and 82 remember with 82 and 82 they are the same so it means we need to take the average and put the average value or average rank for those two so it will be because they are on position three and four we take the 
3 plus 4 and divide by 2, and that gives us 3.5. So they're both going to have a weight or a rank of 3.5, 3.5. And go in 85, 88. It's on position 6, 92 on position 7, 94 on position 8, and 97 on position 9. And once we are done with the ranking them, then we add all the ranks for factory A, all the ranks for factory B. So once we are done with the ranks, then we go and select our test statistics. So because now we need to also determine which one will be our N1, remember? N1 is from the sample size with the smallest value. So factory A has one, two, three, four, five values, and factory B has one, two, three, four, has four values. So therefore it means factory B will be our N1 and factory A will be our N2. And then our T1 will be the sum of the ranks of from our N1, which is factory B. So it will be 24.5. So that will be our test statistic. So we know now we have our test statistic of T1 as 24.5. And we have our N1 being four values of the sample size value four and N2 with the sample size value of five. And we need to test this at alpha 0, 0,05. So now we need to go and do our hypothesis testing. But before we go and do the hypothesis testing, let's go find the critical value. So now our critical value, we use our alpha. That's the other thing. We use our alpha and the N. So going to look at where our alpha value, because our alpha value was 0, 0,05. So the table is broken down into a one tail and a two tail alpha value. So this is the one tail uh, 0, 0,025 and a two tail 0, 0,05. So because we're doing an equality, and therefore, it means we're doing a two tail, so that is why we go to the two tail alpha value of 0, 0,05. And then we're going to look at N1. You will find the value of N1 at the top, and the value of your N2 will be at the bottom, or on the on the left. So our N1, we said it's four, and our N2 is five, and where they meet, we will have our T level of um, uh, lower level or lower limit and T upper limit. And we're going to use 12 and 28 as our critical value or our uh, limit so that it creates two regions of rejection. Okay, so now let's do the hypothesis testing. Let me write down the, the values. We had 12 and 28. So now let's do the hypothesis testing. The first step of hypothesis testing is to state the null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis. So we know that our null hypothesis was the mean of one, uh, the mean of population one or factory, uh, uh, factory one will be the same as the mean of median of the factory two, and the um, alternative will state that they are not the same. And then what else are we given? We are given the value of alpha, we are given the value of n, and we found the, um, the region of rejection. So our lower limit was 12 and our upper limit was 28. So we need to take our T1. T1, we found that it was 24.5. And we need to look at where does it fall. Fall. Does it fall in the rejection area or outside of the rejection area? It falls between 12 and 28 because it's 24.5, so it falls in the do not reject area. And therefore, we do not reject at alpha of 0, 0,05, and we can conclude that there is not enough evidence to prove that the medians are not equal. 
and that's how we do the hypothesis testing. <clears throat> Let's look at how the questions are asked in the exam or in your assignment. So, <clears throat> given the test statistic of T1 is equals 242, so here they have given us the sum rank of our smallest sample size and N1 is equals to 6 and T2 is equals to 36 and N2 is equals to 9. Use the Wilkinson rank sum test to determine at 5% level of significance um, whether the location of the population 1 is to the right of the location of population 2. Which one of the following statement is incorrect? So what is the question asking us? They want us to test the hypothesis that our population one is to the right of population two, is to the right of population two, so therefore it means it will be greater than. So it's a one tail test. So the null hypothesis, they are stating that the median of population one is greater than, oh, it's, I can put equal, don't have to even put that, it's equal to the median of population two and our alternative, which is H1, will say the median of population one The median of population one is greater than the median of population two. That is the hypothesis that we want to test. They also gave us an alpha of 0 0.05. So therefore, it means we're going to have to use the table and only go to alpha a uh, one tail test because this is a one tail test. So this will be a one tail test. So we'll we'll go to one tail test of 0 0.05. They also gave us our N1 is 6 and our T1 is 42, N2 is 9 and T2 is 36. So therefore it means this is our test statistic. Our test statistics because it comes from the sample size N1 of 6, which is lower than or smaller than 6, or smaller than 9. Okay. The question is also asking us, or the other key thing that they gave you here was to tell you that you need to use a Wilkinson rank sum test. But we need to find which statement is incorrect in a way. So let's, after analyzing what I'm given and understanding what the question is asking me, then I must identify the incorrect statement. Now let's go and answer the question. Option one. It states that the hypothesis, the null hypothesis, the population location are the same. Because it's a, it is a hypothesis testing, it doesn't really matter what we put on the null hypothesis because always there is an equal sign. So the null hypothesis will be correct. The Alternative hypothesis states that the location of population one is to the right, but that is what they said. So is to the right. So they gave us that statement. So that is correct. Number three, it says the region of rejection is between the lower limit TL of 33 and TU of more than of more than 63. So we need to go and find the critical value. So if you have tables in front of you, just going to open my table. Stop sharing from that side and share my entire screen. So I can show you the table. So now this is the tables. We're going to go and look for Wilkinson the 
there we go. So here we need to look for one tail test, 0, 0,05. There we go. There is our table that we are looking for. I can make it bigger so you can see it. So we're looking for alpha of 0, 0,04. And we know that our N1 is 6 and our N2 is 9. So we need to go at the top and look for 6. And here yeah, at the bottom, we look for 9. So we both meet. That is where we want to be. 33 and 63. Okay, so that is 33 and 63. So the region of rejection is correct. Our T test or our test statistic, it says it is 42. So our T test statistic, we said it's 42, that is correct. Now, in conclusion, the two population locations are not the same and we reject the null hypothesis. Is that true? Let's test that because we know in terms of our critical value, we have two regions of rejection. We have 33 and we have 63. If it falls somewhere in between, we do not reject. Remember, do not reject. If it falls this side, we reject. We reject the null hypothesis. So let's see. Our 42 falls where? Falls in between 33 and 63. So therefore, we do not reject. So in conclusion, the population location are not the same. We reject the null hypothesis. That will be the incorrect statement. And that's how you do the hypothesis testing and you answer the questions when asked. Any question, any comments, any query? Before we move on into the last bit. Okay, so there are no questions. Okay. Now let's look at will concern rank sum test for large samples. So far we looked at when there is small sample. Now we're going to look at when there is large samples. So when it, they are large samples, sorry, my thingy is Let's bring all of them all at once. For large samples, the test statistic T1 is approximately normal with the mean of T1 and the standard deviation of T2. So, since we are approximating the values, therefore it means we calculate the mean by using your sample size for one plus uh, times n plus one plus n plus two plus one divided by two. Remember, your n will be n plus one plus two. So that will give us your mean of your uh, large samples. And your standard deviation is given by the square root of your n1 times your n2 times n plus 1 divided by 2. Remember, n is n plus 1, n plus n1 plus n2. That's the value of your n. Um, we must use the normal approximation if either your n1 or your n2 is greater than 10. As you can see there, the value of n should be greater than 10. The previous one, the value of n should be less than 10. So if it's greater than 10, then we use this um, approximation. So it means we're going to be using the Z table. Assign your n1 to your smallest, um, uh, the smaller of the two sample size. So the same criteria that we used the previously, we still continue using that. 
and we can then use the normal approximation for the small sample size. So we're going to use in when we calculate our test statistic, which will be different to the test statistics from the rank sum. Here we uh, with the small sample, with the large sample we use the Z test. So it means we're going to find the critical values on the Z table. Our Z test is given by our our mean. I'm going to call it sample mean, which will be our T1 minus our population T1 divided by the standard deviation T1, which is the same as T1 minus your N1 times N plus 1 divided by 2 everything divide by the square root of n1 times n2 times n plus 1 divide by 2 or oh, divide by 12 not 2 sorry i forgot for standard deviation we divide by 12 and that will be our test statistic so let's continue and like I said, we're going to use the Z table to go find the critical value and we will look at that when we get to the exercise. Now let's look at an example. Use the setting of the prior example, which was the first one that we used. The sample size where N is equals to four and N2 is equals to five and alpha of level of significance of less than uh, of 0, 0.05. The test statistic was T1 is equal to 24.4. So now here, what it does is because our N1 and our N2 are less than 10, we're going to use the Z to approximate those uh, sample sizes to a normal distribution. So we can use, we can still continue and use the same because we're going to um, use the normal approximation. So our T1, which will be our sample size T, T, T1 mean for the test statistics, we know we, that we got 24.5. So now we need to calculate the mean for the population so that we are able to approximate it and the standard deviation. Your N1, we remember N1 was 4, so it's N1 times N which is 4 plus 5, which is equals to 9, plus 1 divided by 2, which gives us 20. And our standard deviation will be given by the square root of N1, which is 4 times 5 and 2 times 9 plus 1 divided by 12, which gives us 4,082. 4, to calculate the test statistic, then we just substitute the values that we were given. T1, we know that it was 24.5, which we calculated previously, which is the sum ranks. And our mean population is 20. We just calculated it now. And our standard deviation is 4,082, which we just also calculated, which is the square root of that values. And the answer we get from calculating all this is 1, comma. Our Z test is not greater than the critical value of 1,96 because then we need to go and find the critical value at alpha of 0, 0,05. Um, to find the critical value, let me just go show you how you find the critical value. To find the critical value, we need to go to the Z table. Usually on your thing, you can also use this as your Z table. Um, because we're doing a the one tail, then it means this will be our critical value. So are we doing a one tail or a two tail? So it seems as if we're doing a two tail. Um, and since we're doing a two tail, therefore it means we're going to find the critical value under alpha divided by two. So let's go back to our so if we have our z of 0, 0,05 and we find in there 
critical value and it is a two sided, a two tail. Therefore, we're going to find the Z value on 0, 0,025. So alpha divided by two of 0, 0,025 and that will be our critical value. You can find it that way or you can use your table. So if we use the Z table, so I'm going to give you both options of how you find the Z values. Where are my tables now? So here is the table. So you'll come to the negative side of the table. That's where you will find most of these values. So we're looking for 0, 0,0250 if there are four decimals. So let's look for 0, 0,02. Let's see, 0, 0,0250, there it is, and you can go out. It relates to 1,9, ignore the negative, and you go up and you take the last digit, which is 6, it's 1,96. So you can use this method to find the Z value, or you can use the table at the end to go find the Z value. So you just need to be very careful when you use this table at the bottom especially when you are given only one tail test because if it's one tail you will notice that even though this says alpha of um alpha of uh, uh alpha divided by two you just need to pay attention that this you can also convert it to the alpha values so for example if it's one tail and it is 0, 0,1 you just go to one tail of 0, 0,1 by use by looking at that should correspond to that. Um, and a two tail of 0, 0,1 will be 0, 0,05, which will be this. So you just need to make sure that you pay attention to that. Okay, so since our critical value is 1,96, it is greater than, our critical value is greater than that, um, the Z test, so we do not reject the null hypothesis because the value is below 1,96. So therefore, there is sufficient, there is not sufficient evidence that the means are not equal. And that's how you do the hypothesis testing. Let's look at the example, and then we're going to look at the last, last type of the Wilkinson or the non-parametric test. Hmm. An independent random sample are selected from two populations. The data are shown below, are shown in the table below. Here we have sample one, which has all those values, and sample two, which has all those values. So you can see that sample one has fewer values than sample two. So therefore it means our N1 here will be sample one. So we can automatically from here state that this will be sample one. Use the Wilkinson rank sum test to determine whether the data pro provided sufficient evidence to indicate a left shift in the location of the probability distribution of the sample. The test is using alpha of 0, 0,05, the test statistic Z. Here is the thing that you also need to pay attention when you look at the question, so it says the test statistic Z for a one tail test is. So it means the first thing that we need to do is to order the data that we have from lowest to highest and then rank them. So I'm going to do that. So our sample one and our sample two, and I'm just going to put a line in between so that we can have both of them. So let's start with, let's, we'll, we'll do both of them. So the first value here is from sample two, which has four, which is the lowest value. So we can start with four. I'm going to cr crash it out so that I don't get confused. And the next one will be five and five. So there are two fives, five and five. What else is there? Five, six, seven, eight. We have two eights. 
So therefore it means we'll have eight here and we will have eight there as well. And the next one is nine. So nine, nine, both nine. of them are from sample two. So there will be two nines. And what else do we have? Nine and 10. So we have two tens. So I'll start there, 10 there and 10 there. So those will be the tens. And we have 12s, right? 10, 11, 12, two 12s. So we have a 12 there and a 12 there. What else? 18. 18 on this side. What else? 15. 15. And 16. And 16. So now we need to put some ranks to it. So I'm just going to do this as well. Rank one and rank two. Okay, so let's rank them. So this will be one, two, three. There are four, three, one, two, three, four, five. That will be 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, because we take the average of the two, um, and then, oh, I need to split them, not have them on the same. So this, okay, my bet. Let's change this around. This will be two, this will be one because I'm starting on this side. So that will be 4.5. And we continue 5. This will be 6. Uh, there are 2, so 6, 7. It will be 6.5. 6 6.5. And 7. Oh, there are 2, so it will be 7 and 8 will be 7.5. 7.5 and 7. 7.5 and we also have 8 and 9 so it will be 8 no man I'm not counting right I'm not counting right I'm not counting right hmm. so this one is 4 5 6 7 7.5 so seven, eight. So this should be eight, not seven. So this should be 8.5, 8.5. And then because this is eight, nine, 10. So this should be 10.5, 10.5, because then that will be 11, then 12, then 13. 14, let's just count that again. How many values are here? 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14. So there should be 14 of them. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 4.5, 6, 7, 6.5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 8.5, 10, 11, 10.5, 12, 13, 14. There we go. So we have all of the values, so we just need to add them. Now, uh, which one has the smallest? It was sample one, right? Which is this side. So we just need to add all of this. 4.5. We just add 4.5 plus 8.5. Plus 10.5 plus 12 plus 13 plus 14 equals because we add the ranks 62.5. Do you also get that? Yes. 62.5. So we know, we now know that our T1 is 62.5 so we have that 
but that is not the end because we are going to be calculating the Z and we know the formula for Z is Z is equals to or Z that is equals to your T1 minus your mean T1 divide by the standard deviation of T1. And we know that we can calculate our mean T1 because that it is given by your sample size one times n plus one divided by two. So let's calculate that. N, there are one, two, three, four, five, six. So there are six. Uh, and we know we have already counted them. There are 14. So plus 14 because it's six plus one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Six plus eight is 14 plus one divide by two, which will be 15 times six. 15 times six is 90. That's 90 divided by, divided by two, you get 45, yes get 45. So now we have our mean 2. So we can also substitute into the formula. We know that we have 62.5 minus 45. Now we need to calculate what our sigma t is. So our standard deviation t1 is given by the square root of, let's see if I still remember the formula. It's given by the square root of n1 times n2 times n plus 1 divided by 12. So let's see the square root of n1. There are six of them times n2. There are eight times 14 plus 1 divide by 12. Let's see. Let me see if I open my calculator. I need the fix. and the square root is 7.75. Sixty uh, and the square root, you say the square root is seven point seven. We need to keep all the decimals. We can round off uh, when we're done. Oh gosh, it requires me to put the license. Okay. Should have dealt with it before the session. So we need to put all the values. So it's seven, seven point seven, four, five, nine, six, seven. I I think there are more than that, but I think those should be enough. So you're just going to divide by seven point seven four. Five nine six seven. Okay. I just want to do my. I'm gonna stop right now and then. See. Just want to put in the license on the there.
give me a second. I should be done. FX. Okay, I can share my screen again because now I have got my calculator open. Okay, let me put it this way. Oh, I think it's six two point five subtract forty five divide by seven point seven four five nine six seven. And if I say equal, I should get my test statistics. So any of those values should be equals to that which is option number one. Did you also get the same? Yes. Yeah, that will be option number one. Okay. Which is two comma five two uh, two comma two five nine two. Right, and that's how you answer the question relating to Wilkinson rank sum. I'm not gonna ask you to do the next one. We're gonna do it. Uh, we're gonna look at how we answer the question relating to the other. And then if we have enough time later on, then we can come back to this question 20, which is our exercise two. So let's let's now look at Wilkinson sign rank. So we already covered the two, the, the two Wilkinson when the sample sizes are small and when the sample sizes are large, right? Now we're going to look at how do we do a sign rank type uh, test. Similar, you need the statistical tables, you need uh, the formulas and the calculator now. With the sign ranks, we're also going to introduce another table. So, Wilkinson rank sum test is a non parametric test for two related populations. And these are the steps that you're going to follow in order for you to be able to answer the questions or if you want to do the hypothesis testing. Step one, for each of the sample items, we need to compute the difference because they come from the two samples. So it means we need to find the difference between the two values, the two measurements. It's like doing a test on before and after, and then we just need to check the differences between the two. When we calculate um, the difference, we um, and when we go in um, to calculate the test statistics and all that, we're going to ignore the plus and the minus sign to find the absolute value of the differences. So that's what we're going to do, and we're going to omit the differences where they are equals to zero for any of the sample sizes, and we're going to assign rank. Ti from one to n, and if there are ties, we're going to do the difference. So we're still going to do the same thing as what we have been doing, but now we're only going to be working with one column and no two two columns. So we're going to just assign the ranks based on that column of the differences. 
Then we need to reassign back the sign, the plus and the minus, so that we can calculate or find the sign ring sum T1. And after that, then we can compute the Wilkinson test, T, test statistic, which will be our T as the sum of the positive ranks. So let's look at that example. So what we're going to be doing in terms of calculating the test statistic or what we call the Wilkinson sign rank test statistic, which is the sum of only the positive ranks. So it means we're going to add all the positive ranks together. And in order for us to find out whether we're going to reject the null hypothesis or not to reject the null hypothesis, we need to find the critical value. And finding the critical values, we need to go to table seven, which is critical values of Wilkinson sign rank test. Okay. The other things that we will need is we need to be able to calculate the expected values for the Wilkinson rank sum. Sign ranks are not rank sum. The signed ranks, we need to calculate the expected values, which is given by n times n plus 1 divided by 4. And here we assume that the sample size needs to be greater than 20 and the weighting um, is approximately normally distributed. So our expected value will be that and our standard deviation, which will be the square root of your sample size times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 divided by 24. So it's double the size. Okay. So to calculate the test statistic, we're going to use the Z test. And our Z test is given by Z of your T test, which are your positive sum ranks. We remember those positive sum ranks minus the expected value, which is your mean, divided by the standard deviation, which is your standard deviation of the ranks. Then we need to test for the um, for the difference of, in the pairs. Uh, the null hypothesis will state that the population difference, uh, the population means are the same, and the alternative will state that they are different. Okay. And for that case, we're going to use a critical value. We're going to find the critical value on the Z test. So with the sign ranked, there are two ways you can make a decision. So based on your rank positive um, value, the sum of the rank positive values, you use table seven to find the critical value so that you are able to use that to make a decision. For the sign rank, when your sample size is greater than 20, which is big, which we approximate it to normal distribution, then we use the Z test. So it means your critical values will be from the Z table. And that will use table eight if possible. Okay, so let's look at this example from one of the past exam paper. says in Wilkinson sign rank sum in uh, I think this is from the sum rank sum it's not from yes it's from the sum rank sum yes uh, the test statistic is calculated as t is equals to 91 so they have calculated already the difference and they do have the answer that the different the sum of the positive differences is 91. And they say there are 18 observation pairs of 
which three have zero differences and the, uh, the two test is performed at 5% level of significance. So now they have calculated the T, which is our sum rank. In this instance of the positive sum ranks, and they have given us our N, which is our sample size 18. So there are 18, there were 18 observations. So N is 18. And they also tell us that there were three values that has a zero um, difference. So it means we ignore those ones anyway. And the test statistic, uh, we need to test it, it will be a two tail test. And it is performed at alpha of 0, 0.05. So we have all the information we require. So this will be alpha of 0, 0.05. Choose the correct option. So that is the question. So we need to find the correct answer. Now the first one says the critical cutoff value are, and we need to pay attention to this, it says it's greater than, oh, that because it's for the upper limit, it's 90 and the lower limit is 30. And we can also do the same with number one and number two. Let's go find out if that is correct. So remember, we need to use table seven. So let's go to the table. Let's go to the table. We need table seven. This is table seven. We're doing a two tail and the alpha is 0, 0.05. Two tail, two tail. 0, 0.05 we found our table so this is our table what else do we know we also know that our n is 18 so if n is 18 those are the two values so the values are 40 and 131 so those are the values OT and hundred and thirty one. So going back, let's see which one of the two are correct. So we know that it's forty. Oh, where did I write that? Forty and hundred and thirty one. So the lower limit, lower limit is forty and the upper limit is 131. So this says upper limit is 90, upper limit is 131. So this one is correct. This one is incorrect. Uh, lower limit is 30, lower limit is 40. This one is incorrect. This one is correct. So this one is the correct one. Um, then therefore the other statements don't even, are not even necessary for us to look at but anyway, uh, we can also look at that and say, are we going to reject the null hypothesis or are we not rejecting the null hypothesis as well? Um, it looks like because the T1 is between 40 and 90, so we do not reject. So there are, unless this question was asking which one is incorrect or something like that. But yeah, we've got, to, oh no, the, the next one it says the null hypothesis is rejected. No, we do not reject the null hypothesis because it falls between. So that one will also be not, will not be correct. And if we are rejecting the null hypothesis, no, the null hypothesis will be rejected, will not be rejected. But we do not say that. We say the null hypothesis, we do not reject the null hypothesis, so that won't be right. The test results are inconclusive. No, because we do have all information we need. To. So that won't be correct as well. So the only correct answer is number two. Let's look at the next exercise. A pair difference. Uh, experiment with n is equals to 30 pairs and with our t which is our positive t of 359 using the wilkinson uh wilkinson sign rank uh rank sum test 
to determine whether we can infer at 5% level of significance if the popula two population differ. Which one of the following statement is incorrect? So now let's go back to our statement so that I can understand exactly what is given. A pair difference with uh, experiment with N of 30, so they have given us the sample size of 30, yielded a positive sum ranks of 349 so they have given us that positive sum ranks um, and we know that we're doing a sign ranked sum test um, and we need to determine it at alpha of 0 0.05 so alpha of 0 0.05 so we need to test whether the two population differ so therefore it means we're going to be doing a two-tailed test because they just said it differs. They didn't say it's less than or it's greater than or things like that. So it is a two tail test. A two tail test because of the weight differ. OK, so now we can go and ask us answer the question. Which one of the following statement is incorrect? Number one, it states that the null hypothesis states that the two populations are the same. Is that correct? Always remember in the null hypothesis, it always says, it always have an equal or it will say they are the same. So that is correct. We're looking for the incorrect one. The alternative hypothesis, now remember the, um, the test says they differ, so we just need to check if also it says something like they are not equal or they are different. So the alternative hypothesis states that the location of population one is different from the location of population two for the fact that they mentioned words like different, therefore it means they differ, then it is correct. Number three says the critical value is 1,96. So remember, we're using the Z test for that. Therefore, it means we need to go to the Z critical value of alpha over 2, which is Z over 0, 0,05, which is the same as Z, which is the same as Z of 0, 0,0250. And remember, you can go to table eight, and table eight has all the values that we need, which then gives us 1,96. We did do this, so, but I'm just showing you again if you forgot about it. So we do go and look at 1,96, which is correct. Okay, so now what are we left with? We are left with um, option four or option five to determine whether either one of them are correct. So in terms of option four, it says the region, the region is in absolute value will be greater than of the test statistic will be greater than 0, 0,05, it will be equals to 1,96. So it says in the positive absolute value, the value of your critical value will be um, 1,96. Yes, because it will be positive. If it was in the, um, if it was in the lower side, if um, we will have two regions of rejection because we're doing a two-tailed test. So this side will be positive 1,96. 96 and this side will be negative 1 comma 96 so if it's in the positive side in the greater than side therefore it will be a positive 1 comma 96 if it was in the negative side of things it will be if it was less than it will be negative 1 comma 96 so this statement as well is correct so which leaves us with with one so it says the p value is 0, 0,062. So either we need to go and calculate what the p-value is. Uh, the p-value, you will calculate it 
after you have calculated your Z test. So now, let's see, are we able to calculate the Z test? We can calculate the Z because then we need to calculate Z stat, which is given by your T positive minus your expected divide by your standard deviation. Now, you will ask me, where do we calculate all this or where do we get all this? We do have some of that information because we do know that T plus is 354 minus. How do we get the expected? So to get the expected value, remember, is the formula is N times N plus 1 divide by 4. Our N, there are 30 times 30 plus 1 divided by 4. And that will be 4. Oh, I just lost my calculator now. Do you have an answer? So 30. They say two times it's a charm. Two comma thirty times uh, thirty one divided by four. It's two thirty two comma five. Two thirty two is. Yes. Two, three, two, comma, five. That's what you are telling me. Two, three, two, point, five. And now we need to calculate the standard deviation, which is given by the square root. So how do we do that? T is the square root of your N times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 divided by 24, which is the square root of 30 times 30 plus 1 times 2 times 30 plus 1 divided by 24. So 60 plus 1 is 61. So it's 61 times 31 times 30, which is 256730 divided by 24, which is 2363.75, 2363.75. And taking the square root of the answer, what do you get? 48,618. 48, 48, now. Now, this is our Z value. So, because it's our Z value, we need to go to the Z table. We need to keep only two decimals. So it means, yeah, we can roughly say our answer. Uh -uh. Sorry, I am doing something very wrong here. Yeah. This is our answer here, which is 48 point six one. 8412. So we need to keep all the values. So 48.61. This is where we substitute 618412. Right? That is the answer for our Z, um, our standard deviation. So we still need to calculate our Z. So let's calculate our Z, our Z value. 
Our z is three five four minus two three two point five equals divide by forty eight point six one eight four one two equals and the answer we get is two point four nine nine one four nine nine one we need to keep only two decimals so we can say it's 2.50 so we need to go to the table to the z table and go look for this z value so that we can find the probability the p value and we need to be very careful because it's a two-sided test so let's Go there. So, and because it's positive, then we're going to go to the positive side of the table. So, we need to go to the Z table. Remember our Z table with the negative values that I showed you? Now we need to come here because our Z value is 2.50. So, it means on the left side we need to look for 2.5 at the top we need to look for 0, 0.00 uh, okay right because we're looking for the last digit at the top so let's go to 2.5 oh 2.5 is here and at the top we're looking for come on for zero zero, which is the first column, right? So we can yes. go to the bottom again, and that is the answer that we have, which is zero comma nine nine three eight. So we need to be very careful here. So we need to say one minus point nine nine. 38 equals so we need to go back to our question let's go there so in order for us to find the p value so yeah we know that the p value they said it was that so but however since the value here it's positive and we're doing a 210 so in order for us to find the p value we're going to find the p value by saying one minus the value we find on the table and we need to multiply that value by two because there are two sides. Because of this two-tailed test, it means there are two sides. So we did go and find the value on the table, which was one minus our value on the table was 0, 0,9938, right? Because of its positive, in the positive value, we need to subtract it from one. Why we need to subtract from one? If you look at this, it says we are getting the values from the greater side, whereas we should be getting the value from the smaller portion. So we're looking for the smaller portion, and the smaller portion is the opposite on this one, so it will be that value there, which is what we are finding, which is equals to two times zero comma zero zero, Six two. If it was only a one tail test, this would have been correct. But now, because we're doing a two tail test, we have to multiply by two. So therefore, we take the answer and multiply that by two, and the answer of the p value should be zero comma zero one two. So which makes number five the incorrect statement. Yay, and we are almost at the end. What we didn't cover was number 20 because there is no other um, exercise after this except the ones that I am giving it to you guys to do on your own. So if the session was two hours, we would cover also the rest of the other exercises. Okay, so we do have other exercises that have included in the handout as well. So you can go through them and if you need any help, you can chat with me on WhatsApp and then we can 
I can help you to answer some of this question, some of these questions. So here is the first question. And then the second question is more about the sign rank sum as well. And the third one is about the uh, sum ranks, Wilkinson's uh, rank sum test. Um, and then the sum uh, sign rank sum test with the pairs, matched pairs, the before and the after. Okay, so with the last few minutes, let's recap on what we have just gone through. Um, we have learned three ways of calculating Wilkinson or non-parametric test, right? With the Wilkinson rank sum test, you are able to calculate it for two ways or in two ways. When the sample sizes are small, then we we're going to find the ranks and then we take the test statistic will be the test statistic of the rank sum with the sample size, um, uh, with the smaller sample size. And then we need to go and find the critical value and then use the critical values where we will find them on the, you will find the upper and the lower limit in order for you to determine where your region of rejections are. That is the first one. The second one in terms of the Wilkinson rank sum test is when you have a bigger or a larger sample size and there we are using approximation and therefore we use the Z test. And then you need to know how to calculate the mean and the standard deviation and as well as the Z test statistic. And then we also follow the same process as we have done with the previous one the test statistic or the sample test statistic will be your or your sample mean will be the sum rank of the smaller sample size which will be your t1 and then you substitute into your z test to calculate because you would have calculated your mean and your standard deviation using those formulas and then you can calculate your test statistic also you need to go and find the critical value, but the critical value here, you find them on the Z table and you can find it in two ways, either by using table eight or by going and using the standardized norm, standardized uh, cumulative standardized normal distribution table, which has the positive and the negative side. You just find the, the, um, the alpha value divided by Z two or alpha value inside the table and go find the critical values outside, which are your Z values. And that is Wilkinson sum, uh, Wilkinson rank sum test. In terms of the signed rank sum test, you need to find the difference. You need to assign the ranks by discarding the negative and the positive by just assigning the rank and then putting back the negative and the positive and calculating the uh, the sum ranks. However, while you're doing that, anywhere where there are differences of zero, you need to omit those ones and then only just calculate the sum ranks. And then you need, you can also make decision based on two things. One is based on the test statistic or the T1 that you would have found, which is the sum rank sum of the positive values, and you go to tables. Eh? table seven and go find the critical values on table seven where you just need your alpha value and the value of your n and then you can make your decision based on that otherwise you can use the approximation to normal to normal distribution by using the z test which will be your test your sum rank positives minus your expected values divide by the standard deviation and therefore it means you need to know how to calculate those formulas of the expected value and the standard deviation in order for you to calculate the z value and then to make a decision you need to go and find the critical values on the z table table eight please pay attention when you do your critical values because if it's a two-tailed test you divide your alpha by two if it's a one tail test, you do not divide your alpha by two. And with that said, that concludes today's session. If there are any questions 
or answers or comments. The platform is yours. Thank you, Me. Thank you, Kia and enjoy the rest of your evening. I will see you next week, unless if they cancel the session, I won't know. Please make sure that you complete the register. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Let's stop the recording.